top Democrat in the House making a blunt assessment of President Trump's top aide, Steve Bannon. Here to discuss Republican strategist Adam Goodman and CNN political commentator Simone Sanders, Paris Denard, and Van Jones. Good evening, everyone. Good Mr. Evening. Jones, uh, this morning, Representative Elijah Cummings had some strong words for Steve Bannon and the Trump administration. He is speaking about Martin Luther King Jr. on this, the 49th anniversary of his assassination. Listen to this. In a way, he would be pleased to have seen the first African-American elected president, to have seen uh, many doors open for people like me and others who now have opportunities that would not have had them back then. But at the same time, when we see a guy like Bannon, mm -hmm. who is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a white supremacist uh, type person sitting in the White House, sitting in the White House, and I'm paying his salary, I think he'd be very disappointed. I think he'd be disappointed with all the hate talk that we are hearing now and the climate that we find ourselves in. Van, what do you think? Uh, right on? Too far? What? Well, you know, he's speaking for an awful lot of people. There's a really, really deep concern about Bannon's um, background. The, you know, this whole thing that we, we now politely call the alt-right, which is just a made-up marketing term for white nationalists and white supremacists, um, Bannon has had a relationship with those people uh, through his publication, and that is just very, very disturbing. I can't imagine uh, if there was some other kind of hate movement uh, that Obama said, oh, I want somebody from that hate movement, or no, they, they're just they're the publisher for the people in the hate movement in the White House if, the, if anybody would have stood for that. And so people who know Bannon say that they think well of him, but this sort of record, uh, I think is very disturbing for a lot of people. I think uh, Representative Cummings is speaking for a lot of those people. I want to hear from Paris now. Paris, you know, it is a for, for, would. Do you think, do you think that MLK Jr. that he would be very disappointed? He said in the current administration, as Cummings said. No, I, I don't think that he would be. I think what the difference between Congressman Cummings, who I have a lot of respect for, and Dr. King is that I don't believe Dr. King would have gone out and and and. And, and said these insulting words and, and unsubstantiated claims against people that he was going to work with. The difference between Dr. King and Congressman Cummings, I believe, is that Dr. King was willing to come to the table, sit with these people, work with them. He knew J. Edgar Hoover had a history. He knew LBJ had some things that were they, that was on the record saying some things that we probably would not like about black, black people, but he was willing to work with them and willing to put those things aside to get it done. I think Dr. King would have been at the table well, I, within Dr. the first King hundred days. He had pretty harsh things to say about the president um, and about other people. And also, Elijah Cummings has said he, he's willing to work with this White House. He's one you know, of the Democrats who showed up at the inauguration. It's not like he's unwilling to work with President Trump. He's giving his assessment about... He, and, and, I, and Dr. I think King was very outspoken. I mean, we're talking about Dr. King here. Apparently. Right. And I, th I think that I don't know if Congressman Cumming has ever met uh, Steve Bannon. I don't know if he knows him personally. But, but to, to go to the level of calling him a white supremacist or white supremacist like, I think is beyond the pale. Okay. You can say you don't like him. You can say you don't like Breitbart. That's fair. Yeah. But to go to cross the line and go into somebody's personal character when you don't know that for sure, on a public stage like that, I think is a line too far. Adam, I know you want to respond here, but to, uh, let, me, let me bring some numbers in here for you. Uh, because according to a new survey, this was done by the University of Chicago, there is a huge partisan divide between Republicans and Democrats and how they view African Americans. Survey asked whether African Americans are worse off economically uh, because most just don't have the motivation or the willpower to pull themselves out of poverty. 55% of white Republicans agreed with this statement compared to 26% of white Democrats. Why do Republicans uh, believe that in such high numbers? Well, I can tell you, uh, there's a problem in, with racism on both sides of the divide, uh, that there's too much of it. And I want to, if I can, Don, comment on uh, the, the Bannon part, because uh, bashing Bannon has become a sport in a town where ostracizing and demonizing, one-upping your opponent seems to be the way to go. But what is not being discussed uh, is, in certain terms of the, African Americans in America today is after eight years under the former president where we had stagnating wages, we had poverty on the increase, uh, we had home ownership uh, decreasing. Uh, why after eight years of, uh, of failing to advance in terms of economic empowerment, suddenly a new president with what 70 some days in office is being judged as uh, unable to deliver. I think this is uh, normal Washington one-upmanship. He was talking about Bannon. Wasn't right. talking about the president. I mean, in eight but years, by, 
But I, you know, I hear that all the time about people saying eight years. Do you think you're going to turn over hundreds of years of history in this country in eight years with a president that many people didn't want in office and they said that their first order of business was to make him a one-term president? Do you think that he was going to be able to turn over all of that institutional racism and bigotry in just in eight years? Absolutely not. Okay. So Absolutely not. What's the and point then? What? Well, the point, I mean, part because of when he Because when he dealt with issues that came to race, we were like, well, he's not just the president of black people. He's the president of all people. It was well, kind of damned if he did and damned if he didn't. But anyway, I don't want to, you know, go back and. But that to no, me, but that's, 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 a, that's a spurious argument. That's the right. You're, that's the right question to be asking, Tom. Yeah. But you know, this is a president who, of course, uh, scored more support among African Americans, Hispanics, and Asian Americans than Mitt Romney did in 2012. Yeah. He has a chance through economic empowerment, in my opinion, yeah. to advance the ball. Uh, Simone, I want you to weigh in on that because th th there was another question on that. I didn't get the full answer from Adam about that, but there was another question on whether blacks are inherently lazier uh, revealed. 42% uh, of white Republicans agree compared to 24% of white Democrats. Uh, is that a shocking, did, does any of this surprise you? Uh, no, Don, because I mean, I, I, I work with a lot of entities right now that do polling, that do focus groups, and people are living in silos. Uh, Facebook, for example, if you, Facebook is designed for you to see things that you only like, and if you don't like what you're seeing, there is a mode and a mechanism for you to make sure you don't see it again. So folks are living in silos, and I think that's what we've seen in this latest polling. Uh, I, I definitely think we have to continue to, to break down these silos, and that's why Van's show is so important. I think it's why, I think it's important that we have candid conversations like this, but make no mistake, uh, any issues that were prevalent in the African American and Latino community were definitely there prior to President Obama. And under the Obama administration, we did have 75 straight months of private sector job mm -hmm. growth. You know, folks made real gains, but you can't, like you said, you can't undo, you know, not even 100, 200, 246 years of chattel slavery, 80 plus years of Jim Crow. <clears throat> you can't undo that in eight years. So we have real work to do as okay. a society and community, but. You know, we need some actual gains, some actual policies on the table. We've got much more to talk about. I got, I got to take a break, Van. I'm sorry.